with one Leah Michelle. Oh, gosh, she's just so lovely. She's so <laughs> lovely. And I, I, I really do just adore her. And I adore her family and her friends and everybody. Like, she, she really came in and from the get-go was so gracious. She knew all of our names on day one. Like, she had fully done her homework. I mean, I think she had seen the show, like, six times before we even met her and stuff. And so she already knew all of us. And, I mean, it's just so – I mean, I get to hear Leah Michelle sing Don't Rain on My Parade every single day. And it's it's kind of dumb. It's it really is stupid. Like it's dumb. <laughs> it's the fr- and I I love this story. And the girls in the dressing room made fun of me for it. But now it's one of my favorite stories. The very first time she, she did that song in rehearsal, it, we all knew it was a big moment. She knew it was a big moment. I knew it was a big moment. We she sang that song on a Broadway stage for the first time, and we finish. And I remember, like, I could see, like, little tears in her eyes. Like, I was feeling very overwhelmed because I was also a huge Gleek growing up. My brother and I loved Glee. I rewatched it in, in its entirety over the pandemic for, like, a second time. Like, I, I, <laughs> I know that show. And I, I remember I used to always be, like, compared to Rachel Berry growing up because I was the theater girl. And I also had brown hair, you know, so that automatically means I'm Rachel Berry. <laughs> um <laughs> And so I remember she sang Don't Rain My Parade for the first time. And it was the coolest thing ever. And she turned around and she looked at all of us. And I said to her, I was like, girl, I was 12 years old when I watched you sing that on the Tony Awards after mm-hmm. Glee had premiered. And now I just had the privilege of standing behind you when you sang that on a Broadway stage for a first time. I was like, this is one of the coolest moments ever. And I remember, I think it was Amber, actually, and, and I don't feel bad about saying this. I think she made fun of me afterwards for it. She was like, oh, you're going to, like, ask Leah to, like, watch your favorite episode of Glee with you and stuff? I was like, okay, you shut up. <laughs> she, like, made fun of me for it. And then I get a phone call, like, a few days later from the New York Times, <laughs> which is <laughs> sure, <laughs> which is the sure. silliest, silliest phone call I've ever received in my life. Of them being like, hey, we're doing this piece on Leah. And she mentioned that, like, you were a kid watching her sing that on Glee. And now you're on Broadway with her. Can we, like, talk to you about that for a second? And I, rem- <laughs> and I, for a moment, like, I was afraid that I had annoyed her by saying that. Because obviously, like, you know, when you're known for something, I can imagine that it's exhausting to have people bring up, like, the same project that you've done over and over and over again and bombard you with things like that. But I was very glad that she saw it as an endearing moment and like i i can truly call her a friend i I, we really get along so well um and i adore working with her and yeah that voice is like butter and it sounds the same every single day and i don't know how she does it it's a master class that's wild i mean it getting to work with her you have gotten to work with so many i mean Beanie Feldstein, Jane Lynch, like Tova Felcha, all these people who have like just these legacies, you know, in 